don't know where my keys are at. Sick. How did I lose my keys? Whew. And after freaking 15 minutes of running around, uh, it's time to go down to Salt Lake City. And because I do live about 30 to 40 minutes from Salt Lake City up north, with that being said, there are pros and cons of living away from the big city. One of the pros is that housing costs a little bit less for each acre. So if you think about it, or square foot, should I say, mainly because the city is very accessible through, usually through public transportation. The suburbs, a lot farther, everything is a lot farther. You have to drive. It is very hard to get around with public transportation, while the city, relatively easy to get around with public transportation. Either way, I'm gonna head down right now, so uh, a little bit late, so I gotta get going. Right now, right now, all right, all right stop talking, Alex. You're freaking stupid. Okay, okay, thanks, nah, bye, bye, bye. Wow, that must be a sick freaking angle, dude. If you haven't done so already, you gotta smash a thumbs up just for that freaking sick angle. Freaking do it, cause I spent a ton of time on it. Let's get into the topic of how I found my place right now with three other roommates currently. So the story behind how I found this place was actually, I guess a little bit of luck because, well, kind of. In terms of moving to Utah, I was moving here at around July. I needed to find a place within 10 days of arriving here. So I went to several different places. I probably had more than 20 places on my list to visit. And I visited at least five of them. And I decided to go with a place that's actually 30 minutes up north of where this house is currently at. The place was going to cost around $450 per month and I was gonna live with two other roommates. The only thing I would pay for was the internet, so it was a pretty good deal. In terms of everything else, I visited there and I liked the place. It looked, it looked really modern and it was actually kind of weird because the house looks like, I'm, I'm calling it temper, temp, what do you call it? I'm calling it contemporary kind of art type of building. It is really, really weird. Inside the house was also weird. So it was very unique and that caught my eye. But the thing that I was really worried about was all my stuff fitting inside that house. Cause there were already two people living there and majority of the house was already furnished. So if I decided to move there, I had to give up my dining table, which I showed in my last video. And if you ha haven't checked that out already, you gotta check that out right here. In addition to that, I wasn't sure if I could have fit my TV, my TV stand, and also my king size bed, which is right back there. Essentially, I would have just given up something, at least one or three of these things, just to downsize a little bit. I was okay with that initially, until the moving day, which was uh, very, very weird how I didn't catch this the first time I visited the house. And on moving day, excuse the laundry pile behind me, but on moving day, I sat down with the owner of the house and we went over the lease agreement and stuff like that, even though he didn't provide it to me when I agreed that I was gonna move in on that day. We sat down because mainly it was not really a legally binding agreement per se. It was just like kind of, hearsay rules and for me i mean i respect that kind of thing because i know i'm not gonna f some crap up in their house but essentially he just wants to sit down to make sure we go over some ground rules and as i was sitting in his freaking kitchen slash living room i was sweating my freaking balls off i didn't notice this when i entered the house and toured the house the first time but there was no central AC and there wasn't even a swamp cooler. So what a swamp cooler is, you basically place an AC unit on the windowsill. And that's, I think that's what a swamp cooler is, but it didn't even have that in the house. So I was sweating my ass off as I was talking to him in the kitchen, which was super weird. I just couldn't understand why I was so hot. <laughs> and um, I noticed that and I asked him like, oh, is there no AC here? And I toured the house again, and yeah, there wasn't any 
AC. So I decided at that moment, I was just like, no, I don't want to move in anymore because this is, I didn't know there was no AC and that bothered me enough for me to not basically pay $450 to live there, which it turns out to be good because I actually want to keep all my stuff now, now that I think about it hindsight. Either way, it was a good move, and on that day, I had to move back to my friend's place, which I was already staying to begin with. And uh, yeah, that's when I had to find another place. I went back online, did my research again, got a couple of places, and was scheduling to go out the next week to start looking through apartments and houses again. But on that weekend, I went out with my friend and met his friends, and there was one dude that was actually living here at this house that was trying to find another roommate. And he offered it to me and we were talking about it. At first I was pretty sketched out because I didn't know the dude. So I went talking to him more and more. And eventually I decided, okay, I grabbed his number and I texted him. I was like, hey, could I tour the house a little bit to just see what it's like? And like I said before, I was sketched out because of my first experience of going to another person's house and realizing that it was not a good fit. I was very skeptical that I was gonna like this, but either way, I convinced myself somehow, started to drive down here and just remembering seeing the big ass houses around this neighborhood. And I was like, holy crap, this is a very nice neighborhood. And I'm wondering how much this place is. So toured the house, loved it, and moved in basically that weekend. And here I am now. So that was pretty freaking dope. One of the big convincing factors for me of deciding to stay here with three other people is because the rent for all four of us is $2,300. And if you split that amongst four of us, it comes down to $575. I hope that math is correct. I don't think I could find any place like this that is as big as this with that low of a cost. The utilities and internet have to be paid separate, so really it comes out to around $650 to $700 per month. For $700, I could have found a place that would have been my own, but it would have been in an apartment complex up in Ogden, which is 20 to 30 minutes away from here. From doing my own research about Ogden and also hearing from my coworkers, Ogden was claimed to have the highest crime rate in Utah. So that was not exactly a uh, fun thing or a good thing to have. Either way, that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to move up to that smaller apartment by myself in Ogden. Living with other people helps solidify my paranoia and majority of the time I am not alone at this house and that is helpful for, for me as a person. All right, now that you understand a little bit about the mindset and how I exactly decided to live here with three other people, now it is the time for me to tell you how you can do the same. Now, some of these are obvious methods, but for many people, they don't think about the obvious and you kind of have to take action on yourself to make sure this happens, even though it is obvious most people just don't take any action. So here it is. The first method is very, very obvious. Go online and search for roommates. Facebook Marketplace was not a thing when I initially was trying to move in Utah. So that's a new technology, which was really a year and a half ago, that has blown up. Every single person should have a Facebook Marketplace and when they list for roommates, you could easily find listings where someone is trying to find a roommate or someone's looking for another roommate to like basically collab and get an apartment or a house. So look online, try Facebook Marketplace first, and then maybe try Craigslist, and then go into Zillow. Zillow might have one. And then I think Realtor or... Um, some other real estate kind of website or housing website will allow you to sometimes find some roommate listings. And all worse comes to worse, you more than likely have some sort of Craigslist type of website 
that is more local. For Utah, it is called KSL.com. It is like a news network kind of thing, but they have basically a classified page on the website where people could list stuff to sell, basically a Craigslist slash Facebook marketplace, but it is more like a neighborhood thing. So I have used that before and I have gotten in contact with other people who have looked for roommates when I initially. With this method, it will take a little bit of research. It will take a little bit of time for you to understand how much you are willing to pay for living with another person, how big of a house it is, so you have to tour, how clean your roommate is, and you have to go through, basically learn a little bit about the person that you're about to board and uh, live with. The second method that I recommend you to find good roommates or just offerings in general is just within your friend group or your working space. Sometimes it is easier to trust your coworker a little bit more. So you deciding to live with that person may be just a lot easier logistically. And additionally, you already kind of built that trust within work. So even if you're not trying to live with that specific coworker, perhaps he or she will have some kind of referral, maybe his or her friend knows of another person uh, that may be renting out a room or may be looking for a roommate, whatever the situation is, just relying on another person you know in face-to-face -face and at work is helpful because that's exactly how I did it. I connected with a friend of mine and the friend knew of another friend and that's how that all worked out. You just have to meet new people in person in order to understand if you are willing to, you know, live with him or not. Also, understand this. When you are renting a place and buying a place or just finding a place to live, you are more than likely going to have to live there for a year. Most lease agreements are a year. So make sure you understand what you're signing when you get to your first place and you're looking through the contract of staying at that place. There are certain rules that sometimes the homeowner or your landlord or your roommates just don't don't want to give in, say like pets. You have to understand that and consider that. And additionally, if you are having pets or thinking about having a pet, you are more than likely going to get charged a little bit more just because you have a pet. It is pretty standard when that happens. So just keep that into consideration in terms of your finances. If you haven't caught on already, I think the place that I currently live in, the six bedroom house, is a really good deal. It is a steal for many, many people, mainly because the house is so big that the privacy thing in terms of like having your own bathroom and having enough space separate away from each bedroom is such a luxury that if I was to pay $575 elsewhere, I don't think I would have gotten a similar or better deal than this. What I'm really trying to say is that you have to keep in mind that me finding this place is an outlier. It's not the normal. I don't think it's the normal at least. I haven't went and hard search for roommates that can live within a big house like this for $575. I haven't done that, but from my experience of just glancing on Facebook Marketplace, this seems to be like a hidden gem. Make sure you are keeping your expectations a little bit lower because more than likely you will probably spend a hundred to two hundred dollars more than you want to do. I highly suggest just keeping your expectations as low as possible so you don't disappoint yourself when you cannot find a good as of a deal as I did. Did I even speak English correctly right there? It was good as, as good of a deal. I think I just said it really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is quite simple nowadays because of the internet and so many platforms do allow people to make classified ads to advertise for a roommate or a place to live. So just make sure you are doing the hard research and reflect on what you exactly want in a home or in an apartment or whatever you are looking for. Be sure to always understand that you can change your mind when it comes to searching or realizing this is not exactly what I want after a year or so. That is all for today's video. I hope you got some good information from it. 
If you think this video was helpful or whatever you liked it, enjoyed it, if you even hate my face, just freaking smash that thumbs up button because it really helps me out with the channel and the videos and it tells me if you like the video or not. And of course, leave any questions that you have down in the comments section below. If you like my crap, subscribe, holla back at your boy. See you later, dude. If a motherfucker test me, I'ma make his neck bleed All this way be hefty, I say for my besties Always right, no lefty, oh don't stress me Double OT, I need more sleep So don't test me